Hi, and welcome to this FabFilter Twin 2 sound design tutorial. I'm going to start by selecting the clean preset. Turn off filter 1 and click one of the oscillator icons to show detailed settings. I'm going to switch oscillator 1 to a sine wave. Turn on oscillator 2, which is tuned an octave higher, and switch that to a sine wave as well. Now our two sine waves are being added together and we can use the volume controls to the right to adjust the level of each oscillator and the tuning controls to tune each oscillator independently. Now notice what happens if I click the little multiply symbol in between the oscillator icons. One of the volume controls is greyed out because our two sine waves are now being multiplied together rather than added. Or in other words, they are ring modulating each other. This creates sum and difference sidebands which depend on the frequencies of both waves. So if I tune oscillator 2, it will sound like the pitch is changing for both oscillators. And we get a range of inharmonic, metallic sounding waveforms. I'm going to switch oscillator 2 up another octave, and then set oscillator 3 to another sine wave and tune it to the fundamental. I want to shape this into a bell type of sound, so let's start by setting a suitable shape for the main amp envelope. I'll set a release time of about 3 seconds, then turn sustain all the way down, and set the decay time about the same as the release. So I now get the same long decay regardless of how long I hold down the key. Now I want to make the higher partials decay quicker than the low fundamental, so that the sound gets warmer as it decays. So let's take a look in the filter section. Notice that when I turn on filter 1, the sound starts to distort slightly, and we lose some of the purity of our bell sound. That's not what I want, so I will swap the filter for a different type. Let's try the metal filter, and tune it down to about 200 Hz to remove the higher frequencies almost completely. Now I'm going to create a new envelope, and link it to filter 1 frequency, with a healthy modulation depth. I want this envelope to decay quicker than the main amp envelope, so I will set a release time of about one and a half seconds, turn sustain all the way down again, and set the decay to match the release. Notice that we have a velocity MIDI source over to the right, which is linked to output volume, so that if I play harder, the sound gets louder. I'm going to leave this in place, but turn the depth down a bit. And I'm also going to link velocity to something else, Notice that when I drag a cable from the source drag button, the envelope points are highlighted to indicate they are possible modulation targets. I'm going to link velocity to the decay time of our filter envelope, e.g. 2, and then do the same for the release time. Now I can use my playing dynamics to control how quickly the filter closes down. And I can change the feel of the patch by choosing different response curves. I'll go with the exponential setting. I'm almost happy with my bell sound now, but I want a little bit more attack, so I will click the plus symbol again and create another new envelope generator. I'm going to set the sustain to zero again, but this time I'm going to leave the decay and release times at their default very fast settings, and link the envelope to the main output volume. OK, let's turn on the delay section now and pick a preset. I'll try long filtered delay 3. Now I'm going to add one last touch. I'll click the plus symbol to add a new modulator and choose a new MIDI source. This defaults to mod wheel, which is fine. So I will drag a connection over to the portamento knob and turn down the depth a bit. Now I can use the mod wheel to subvert the bell-like nature of the sound with an occasional unexpected pitch glide. I'm going to approach it from the other direction now and analyse one of the factory presets to see how it works. Let's pick the Rhythmic ARP patch from the Best Of folder. This is quite a dense, rich sound, so let's pick it apart. I'll turn the delay section off to start with, and then turn off both main filters as well, so that we are hearing just the raw output from the oscillator. Now it's becoming easier to hear the three different elements of the sound contributed by each oscillator. If I turn off oscillators 2 and 3, 
we can hear that oscillator one is providing the low fundamental of the sound. But this is not quite a raw sawtooth wave, as we have some detuning from the unison setting at the bottom. Let's reset this to one. Now let's turn off oscillator one and turn on oscillator two instead. Notice that the icon has a little M symbol next to it. We have another sawtooth wave from this oscillator, but this time it is cycling through a little melody. I'm going to click the icon to show detailed parameters. The detune knob for this oscillator is set to zero, but this also has an M symbol next to it, which indicates that this parameter is being modulated by something. Now notice what happens if I click the little M symbol. All the source buttons on the source bar are now greyed out, except the ones that apply to this parameter, in this case just XLFO1. And all the other modulation slots are greyed out, leaving just the oscillator 2 detune slot highlighted. Sure enough, if I turn this slot down, the melodic pitch modulation gets less extreme, then eventually disappears completely to leave us with another static sorted. Let's turn this slot back up all the way and take a look at the XLFO itself. Notice that this has a little piano keyboard graphic to the left of the steps panel. We can turn this off by clicking the X symbol next to it. Now each step of the sequence can be dragged freely to any value. But if I turn the snap button back on, each step will snap to the nearest equal tempered semitone value, so it's easy to create conventional melodies. Now let's turn oscillator 2 off and listen to oscillator 3, which is just simple white noise. Obviously this part of the sound was being substantially shaped by the filter section, so let's turn filter 1 back on. Now we hear a resonant sweep up, and when it reaches the top we can recognise the high fizzy element of the original sound. Let's click the filter icon to show the parameters. Filter 1 is set to a steep 48 dB per octave low pass type, with a healthy amount of resonance dialed in via the peak knob and we can see that both the frequency and the peak knobs have M symbols next to them. Let's click the modulation symbol for the frequency knob and see what's assigned to it. XY1 is highlighted over to the left, as is its filter 1 frequency slot. And sure enough, I can adjust the filter cutoff by dragging the cursor vertically on the pad. We also have two other highlighted sources, however. EG2 is set to produce the slow sweep up on each note, while the mod wheel applies a tiny bit of negative modulation when I push it up. Now let's turn on filter 2 as well, and notice that the sound doesn't really change. Filter 2 is configured in series with filter 1, but it is set as a low pass type, and the frequency knob is all the way up, so the whole signal is passing through. However, we have another M symbol next to the frequency knob, so let's click it and see what modulation has been set up. Now we see both the mod wheel source buttons are highlighted, so let's click the first one. And now we can see the highlighted filter 2 frequency slot above it. Notice the minus sign at the left of this slot to indicate negative modulation. This means that when I push my mod wheel up, filter 2 closes down. And with the mod wheel all the way up, we hear filter 2 oscillating, as if the resonance has been turned up as well. So let's click the M symbol for filter 2's peak knob, and sure enough we see that it is also linked to the mod wheel via the slot below. So let's turn the other two oscillators back on, enable the delay section again, and switch the unison parameter at the bottom back to 2. Now we are more or less back to our original sound, but we have a better idea how to tweak it to our liking. If I want the sweep up at the start of the note to be faster, I can simply navigate to EG2 and speed up the attack time. Or perhaps I want something different to happen when I push up the mod wheel. Let's navigate to XLFO1, which is producing the pitch sequence for oscillator 2, and also link it to filter 2's frequency knob. With the modulation depth all the way up. Now when I close down filter 2 using the mod wheel, the resonant peak mirrors the melodic pattern from oscillator 2. Of course, I can also adjust the XLFO settings. I'm going to turn off the MIDI trigger button to stop the XLFO resetting for each note of the play. And I'm going to turn up the glide knob a bit to add a tiny bit of portamento style smooth. That's all I've got time for in this video. Thanks for watching.